Hello there and welcome to this video back to basics double entry bookkeeping. My name is Tom Clendon and I'm doing this on behalf of PQ magazine. Now whether you're starting out your accounting studies or approaching your finals it's important that you're able to master double entry bookkeeping. Double entry bookkeeping is all about rules. That's why it's so easily computerized. And I want to go over what these rules are to make sure that you're comfortable with them. And the first issue is about the elements of the accounts. And really all accounting is about five building blocks. Assets, which are resources that we control, land, building, receivables, bank, liabilities, obligations that we have, trade payables, bank overdraft, that sort of thing, and equity, sometimes known as capital. And that's the ownership interest. And these three elements are always found on the statement of financial position. Then we have our two elements which are in the P&L, in the income statement. Income, that's our revenue from sales, day-to-day -day, uh, selling of goods and services, and expenses. Again, our day-to-day -day running costs of the business, wages, heat and light. So there are five elements in the accounts. And when we have a transaction, there will always be two effects on those elements. So for example, if we repay a loan, then that one transaction of repaying a loan reduces our money, asset, and reduces our loan, the liability. So one transaction always has two effects. And these effects, one of which will be a debit, which we sometimes abbreviate to DR, and one will be termed a credit, which we sometimes abbreviate to CR. And debits we find on the left and credits we find on the right. So duality and one debit, one credit. Don't think about it too much. These are rules. Now, when do we debit and when do we credit? Let me start by thinking about assets that are going up. If we are increasing our land, if we are increasing our receivables, if we're paying money into the bank account, that's always going to be a debit. Now, assets are very similar to expenses. We, we have to pay money to buy an asset. You have to pay money for wages. They're both similar. So assets and expenses are always debits. The opposite of an asset is a liability. So therefore, it's a credit. So if it increase a liability, it's a, that's why they're called creditors. Opposite of an expense is income, sales, and there'll be credits. Now, our fifth and final element is ownership interest, equity, capital. And this is similar in its nature to a liability in the sense that it's what the entity owes to its owners. So equity is always a credit. So when we are creating and increasing, we're debiting assets and expenses and we're crediting liabilities, income and equity. But if they're going down, it's the opposite. This is such a valuable table please make a note of it. You can pause this video. You can play it again. Now, there is another way of remembering the debits and credits, which I know some of you like, dead click. You remember the mnemonic, dead click, and that gives you a handle in when to debit, when to credit. So debits are expenses and assets. If they go up, you debit expenses, you debit assets. And the click is the credits. The liability is the income, and we're calling it capital here for the mnemonic. Now that leaves the second D. And the second D is drawings or dividends, which is effectively a reduction in capital, a reduction in equity, which would therefore be a debit. So dead click is a way of remembering. But really the way to remember is to apply. And I've got three examples to show you of practical applications of debits and credit transactions. So the first is we have a company that receives 50,000 cash. Now, the reason they're receiving it is because the owners, the shareholders, have put money in. And so the company is issuing shares. So from the perspective of the company, there are two effects going on here. The company is receiving money. Yeah, more money, 
more assets in its bank account, but it's got a bigger ownership interest. It's got a bigger equity. So both the asset and the equity are going up. Assets go up. It's the debit. Equity goes up. It's the credit. That's the application of the rule. Second example. The company buys a car. Doesn't pay for it, though. Doesn't pay for it in cash. Buys it on credit. So we've got two effects to that one transaction. We've got a car, more assets, but we now owe money. So we've got more liabilities. OK, the two effects are bigger asset, bigger liability. The table tells me that if an asset goes up, that's a debit. If a liability goes up, that's the credit. It's the application of those rules. Debit is on the left of a T account. Credit is on the right of a T account. So a little journal there summarizes what is going on. But life can get complicated in accounting. But double entry is a beautiful way of simplifying and summarizing what is going on. So let's think about ISA 36. Let's think about impairment reviews on previously revalued assets. So we've got an asset with a carrying value of 60,000. It's been revalued in the past and sitting in equity is a revaluation of 10,000 sitting in reserves and the recoverable amount is 45. Now you don't need a calculator for this, but the first thing you need to understand or acknowledge is that there's an impairment loss here of 15. And that's because the carrying value exceeds the recoverable amount. So the figure in the books of 60, you can only get back 45. So you've got a loss of 15. Now, normally I would talk about the loss of 15 being charged against profit, but this is an asset that has been revalued. So we have a little bit of a problem. The impairment loss is an expense. It's a loss. So it's a debit. The asset has gone down by 15. So you're reducing the asset down by 15. But because the asset has previously been revalued, you charge the impairment loss to the revaluation reserve to the extent of the reserve. And therefore, we can effectively explain that theory, demonstrate that theory by a simple journal entry. We're going to be debiting the reserves by 10, debiting the PL as an expense of 5, and writing the asset down by 15. That's using a journal entry in a relatively complex situation. Double entry bookkeeping is all about rules. Don't think about it too much. Make sure you understand there are five elements. There are two effects to each transaction. One will be a debit. One will be a credit. Assets and expenses are debits when they go up. Equity, liability and income are credits when they go up. My name has been Tom Clendon. And that is my website. This has been a brief video for PQ magazine. There is an accompanying article in the summer edition of 2020. Thank you very much for listening.